Okay, we're ready to talk about the spread of the message. Uh, we had read the uh, uh, scriptures in the first chapter there, verse 40, uh, 41. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. <clears throat> um, so I, I read this statement, I think, last. Now that someone else has seen Jesus, he also must declare him. Okay, so you, you're beginning to get this um, orbital effect, if you will. The sun being in the, minute, in, the, in the center. And things starting to gravitate around him. Uh, kind of like the uh, solar system. You know, that has the sun in the center, and, and things begin to find their pull from him. And uh, the whole thing is not just based on that particular drawing to him, but how that works in relationship to one another. <clears throat> so um, notice that Andrew first went to his own household. He first went to his own household, to his brother Simon. So Andrew is not just a hearer of the word spoken by John. In other words, he didn't just hear it and go, oh, this is good. There's something that begins to happen. Well, I mean, it's real obvious. The truth will make you free. I mean, if you really begin to hear something that is liberating, and this is one of the things that convinced me that many people have not heard is that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot keep your mouth shut. You must declare him. You will declare him because if you have found something that works, you will find your mouth opening up. You will, and, and I'll tell you what's interesting, is that it's not that you say, oh my God, if that's true, then I should. It's not that. It's not a pressure you put on yourself. It's not a pressure somebody else puts on you. It is that you'll find yourself. You'll be sitting there talking to somebody and all this stuff will start coming out and you're going, I didn't know all that was, had gotten in there. I had no idea that that was, you know, making an impact on me. But here it is coming out of me. And, and of course, that cycle needs to continue. Continue to hear, continue to give out. And, and life is intake and give out. And just about anything, I mean, everything from plants to automobiles to everything else is intake and give a human body, the whole thing. Take in and give out. Take in and give out. Take in and give out. And that was one of the reasons why we said we didn't want a Bible school like, you know, Christ for the Nations or any of the others that where you just sit for three years. We wanted one where you could come and you could minister all the time. You could minister in many different ways. You could minister on major outreaches. You could minister in small ways through the different uh, things that we have going. Uh, you can minister to one another. You can minister by serving. You can minister by doing all sorts of things. And um, because... I don't believe that you can just take in and take in and take in without ultimately just getting fat and then dying or something. You know what I mean? I mean, there has to be a take in and a give out. And, the, and if, you, if you learn um, uh, moderation and you learn balance, then you will learn when to take in and when to give out and when to take in and when to give out. And, and you'll have, it will, it's like, what is breathing? It's taking in and giving out. I mean, it is a constant, and you're not sitting there going, oh, did I breathe that second? You know, did I forget? You know, or something like that. And, um, I mean, we used to do that on drugs, but you know, I forgot how to breathe. You know, but uh, but that shows that there's another influence there. You know, um, taking in and giving out, and that flow. Okay, so Andrew is not just a hearer of the word; he has seen the one of whom John spoke. Okay, it's different. He didn't just hear John speak. He has seen the one of whom John spoke. And they also must declare him. Those of like precious faith will be drawn together because of the life found in the word, being the logo, the center, the, the total concept. If you, could, if you could think of, you know, it's uh, that doesn't even work for us because you go, well, if you think of the solar system and the sun being the center and everything, but see, we're, all, we're so earthbound and we're pulled by gravity to this earth and we're all caught up with this. We don't realize that's the center. You know what I mean? I mean, we're the center as far as we're concerned. But we're not. You know, the sun is the center, and the earth is just one of many 
you know, just happens to be the one we're on, so that makes it important, you know. But it's really, it's really, uh, I'll tell you, you know, uh, the earth could explode and uh, you, pretty much the universe would go on as normal, you know what I mean? Uh, if our sun explodes, I don't know about the universe, but I know that our little planet and us, you know what I mean, we would not be able to exist. You don't realize the priority, and I, Lord's really having me say that to a lot of people, priority, priority, priority. We don't realize the priority of God the Father toward His Son. And so we set other priorities, and it's real easy to do, and it's we're going to do it, you know what I mean? There's no need getting mad at somebody that does that um, because it's just, a, it's just a symptom or a proof. It's a proof that they haven't really seen the one that gives life and existence. You know, Paul talked about that to them on Mars Hill. I mean, you know, he's, he is the source, the source, the logos, the, and, and, and John said, I'm the voice of one. One. I speak of one. I've got one only to talk about. <clears throat> so those of like precious faith will be drawn together because of the life found in the word, and the chain reaction will continue, and it is a chain reaction. The scriptures show it as a chain reaction. This first chapter is from which the disciples, and they were all came together from which where we came from ultimately. This is the the outward working of the beginning, working right on down to the spread, but it's not just a spread, it's a gathering in order to spread. And this is where many people miss it. They're wanting to spread. The, I'll, I'll go out and be a missionary, but there must be a gathering. And there, from that gathering, it was spread. You know, um, Paul didn't even sit there and go, you know, I really feel led. I think I'm going to go out into the ministry. The Holy Spirit came and put it on the hearts of the leaders and said, send this servant and that servant. And they ended up taking a bunch more with them and they ended up traveling around. They were a body that traveled. It wasn't one or two. It wasn't three or four. You search the scriptures. They ended up being this big group. And uh, I like the way that they operated too as they went. They, he, Paul would send some over here and he'd go over there and other go. And then they'd all meet back at so-and-so place and everything. I mean, they were just, this was this, gathering that was spreading that was when they came back they'd introduce somebody new they picked up <laughs> you know what I mean I mean it was really cool and Jerusalem was the same way except they weren't traveling they were when the persecution hit <laughs> sent them all out you know but uh, <clears throat> you know they were preaching the word together they were in, in fact I believe that it was a result of life that drew them that caused the spread. And I believe that anybody that doesn't recognize that will come up with a program to spread, and it may be a successful spread, but it is not uh, life. It's the only way I know how to put it. And it will eventually run its course, like everything that is a program. It will eventually run its course. <clears throat> okay, so I said it will cause a, uh, the chain reaction will continue to knit the body together, reading from verse 43 and verse 45. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Jesus found Philip, said, Follow me. Verse 45 says, Philip findeth Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. You see? They're continuing to spread, but what is happening in the, even in the process of the spreading? A gathering is taking place. What is happening in the process of the gathering? A, a spreading is taking place. It's normal. It is normal. It is, it is normal for life to give in, to, to take in and to give out. <clears throat> Therefore, you know that something is wrong, and it, you can't fake it, you can't da-da-da-da, if there's not, you know, David said, my cup runneth over. I mean, you know, when your cup runs over, it spills out. You can't help it. You can't help it. Either we have what we would call periodic intakes, you know, every three 
for six weeks, we sit down and have a banquet and just stuff our face and, you know, usually out of panic more than anything else. <laughs> you know, and then we feel real good and we go three to six weeks without eating anything until we're anemic and dying. And then we, and that's not normal. I mean, there are other principles. That, that's a principle. But another principle is moderation. Another principle is balance. And to understand that, and to, and to, and to, um, you know, whether it's emotions or anything, food or anything, you don't go way high and then way low. You don't do that on any plane in any level. You learn, you know, say, well, life's real boring that way. No, no, no. That doesn't limit the you know, the, the things of your personality and whatever, but I'm talking about as far as being led by those things and those things being the government of your life where that, you know, you, you know, your life is either a soap opera crisis or it's, you know, the most wonderful love story in the world, you know. And, um, you know, I, I truly believe that God gets a lot more pleasure out of those who can daily, daily. The Lord told me years ago, it wasn't going to be the rich people. It was going to be the daily givers, the consistent givers that would, would help support a church. And he, he told me that, and then I saw it to be true. You know, because you're always praying for the big one. You know, oh, send us just two people that make a million dollars a year and tithe off of it. You know what I mean? And... Um, you know, actually, we've had people that in this church were a part of this church that are now making over a million dollars a year, but they happen to leave the church sometime back. Well, you know, I don't get a tithe off of a million dollars, and you know what? Don't need it. I'm not. I'm not even depressed about that. Well, why'd you bring it up? Just to let you know that that happens, and it don't matter. I mean, we're still going. You know, there may be a chance that the millionaire may not be going in five or six years. I mean, I don't know. But we're going to go because we're going to stay with God's pattern. We're going to stay with his life. We're going to seek him. We're going to put him first. And we're going to find that life breeds life. And we're going to find that that which is faking life is going to be like a mask that just corrodes and corrupts and falls off and will be seen for what it is. And that scares everybody in the whole world. Oh, my God, don't say that. Encourage me, brother. You know? Well, who knows, maybe your mask needs to fall off, you know, because there are some people that really, they think that's, you know, they think they're safe, and they're not safe. And better it fall off now, and you fall on your face and find the Lord and be seen as an utter wretch, than you wait and stand before God, having faked everybody, including yourself, out all your life. You know, <laughs> you know to me, it's just real sad. I don't even want... I wouldn't worry about that. To me, everybody is brought low. The only way you can ever be exalted is to be brought low. I mean, it's ultimate. It's going to happen. I just, I accept it went, okay, you know, instead of trying to, like, build it up higher so my fall will be really hard, you know what I mean? Why don't I just accept what the pattern is, realize what it's going to be? I'm going to look like an idiot. Everybody's going to think I'm an idiot, and I'm going to be found running to you looking to you, hoping in you, you know, but others don't like that, then. they would rather have anything happen but to face the fact that somebody saw them for what they are, well, God sees it, and he sees it every day, you know, and it's, it's funny, because those people are deceived, because they don't think that God sees it, and that's why they are so hard on themselves when they fail, <laughs> you know, they don't, they act like they haven't even seen it. God don't see it. They don't see it. You know, God knew it all along. He's got foreknowledge. He knows that you're an utter wreck. He knows that. And still loves you and puts up with you right now while you're faking it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, this, we, we call that a good God, okay? That's what we call that. So, you know, to me, it's just, you just see the pattern, you figure it out, and you go, okay, well, if this is going to happen, I... I'm not going to start, like, building on all that stuff. I'm going to start building towards knowing the Lord. Notice the emphasis of Philip. He says, we have found him. We have found him. He hasn't found another church or, oh, I found a really good pastor, you know, or I found a really good church. A lot of people, uh, or I found a really good church. I love the way they worship. It appeals to me. It's 
just what I want. You know, I found a really good church. It is real hot and everybody sweats all throughout the service. You know, it's just what I've always wanted. You see what I mean? I mean, it almost takes God to be drawn to, the, to a manger where the animals stink and there's... You know what I mean? It, it, it takes God to get somebody there. Because you and your natural senses would not be drawn to that. And that's understandable. That's not... I, I don't feel insulted by that. It's a, after a pattern, you know. But then I thank the Lord that the right ones do find themselves to where they, they need to be. And that's the grace of God. Uh, he doesn't speak of the great group of people that are there. He has found Jesus. We have found him. He didn't say, I found a really good bunch of people. Uh-huh. Eric? Uh-huh. Cool. That is so cool. Yeah, that the one. Yeah. <clears throat> of which... The scriptures that all went before with all the great men of God wrote of this one. You know, when you see the logos, it just shoots the fool out of, you know. I mean, you know, this is the one of whom Moses, the big shots, the big guys wrote. They longed to know this one. We found it. Ah! You know? To, if that really happened, now, okay, we're either presumptuous, high-minded, heady, and really foolish to think that we found this one. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, we have found him. <laughs> of whom... When you search the scriptures in Moses, you find him there. And when you search David, you find him there. And when you search Isaiah, you find him there. He's there over and over. This is the one. This is it. You know, you see the logos. You go, okay, let's see. What am I going to do with my life? <laughs> I'm. You know what I mean? It, it really... You, it's not really hard to make these decisions or to figure out, you know, we go, oh, I'm just, I'm confused, you know. You know, I mean, if you really have found this one, you go, this is it. This is what it's all about. And when it's all said and done, it's not going to be how, you know, how well my car ran or how happy my little home was or did my business do good or because that's what the people of the world worry about. That's what they're all concerned with. How am I going to pay the next bill? And am I going to be able to keep all my bills paid? I want to do it for the Lord. Well, they want to do it for their credit record, but they want to do it. You know what I mean? I mean, whereas, you know, I love it. But Jesus, Jesus is the one who said, look, you know, take no thought for those things. Don't get wrapped up. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all those things will be added. And if you, you believe that, then you do that. But most of us want to get those settled, and then we want to follow the Lord. And you say, well, nobody in this group right here does that. You are so wrong. We have, we have many people right here in this group. And that's okay. I mean, I'm not saying any of this to condemn you, and I'm not even saying it to turn you. I say these things because they're the truth and need to be said, should be said. If the Holy Spirit uses it and you find it working on you, then get with him and discuss it. If you just feel like it's pressure from me, I take my pressure off. I put no pressure on you. I don't, I'm not trying to herd cattle in the direction of Randy's ideas. I don't, I, I'm not. I don't even have any desire to do that. I just want to be able to declare the truth. And if it's the truth, evaluate it, hold it before the Lord and let him speak to you. If he speaks to you, then act on it. And then you follow the Lord. <laughs> okay? So enough said. You know, sometimes you see people squirming and go, I'm not trying to make you squirm, man. This ain't, you know, I'll oh, get off of this one. I want to hear something that's going to, you know. Well, I want you to hear something that's going to tell you, okay? <clears throat> 
um, he has found Jesus, and in order for him to learn the life, hmm, it's a good sentence. He has found Jesus, and in order for him to learn the life, it was necessary for him to join with others who believe as he does. Isn't that good? <laughs> it became necessary. Because he said, if, if this is the one, guess what? It's not just me and Jesus got a groovy thing going. It is you're joined with those people. Right? They couldn't just come visit and say, look, uh, Jesus, could I, like, I'm going to come, like, every three days and when you see me coming could you just move over here to the side and we'll spend some time together I don't really like the smell of fish and you know I don't want to be seen with those tax collectors and you know what I mean Jesus said no this is, this is what I'm about right here this is what I'll be about every moment that you see me from now on <laughs> this is it you don't like this you mess with me? You me yeah. Anyway. So, his decision to join this particular group of people had nothing to do with how they hold worship service or with attitudes or mannerisms. <clears throat> had nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of those things draw people, you know. Oh, we're a, a group of young people or we're family church or we're... You know, how about we're just following Jesus? <laughs> you know, and that that way you see people like Harriet sitting there beside somebody that's got weird looks or whatever, you know, and, you know, you got married couples and you got Greg, you got, you know, oh, oh, so, well, you had your hand up, so you asked. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it's more than you have to That tends to feed stuff that you don't really want to feed, and that and at first it's okay to feed that because it kind of draws people, and if you get get them pointed at the Lord, then that's fine. But usually that never happens. Usually it feeds stuff, and then people get off on that, and then this exclusion things thing comes and whatever you know. Right. It doesn't have to be. Right, right. Well, you know, I mean, this is may sound off the subject, it's not, but, you know, if everybody on Sunday morning wore jeans and somebody visited and they're used to going to a regular church that wears a tie or whatever, they would feel weird. If, if, uh, if everybody put their feet up on the back of the pews, you know, they'd feel weird. If, every, if uh, you know, if everybody wore... If all the girls wore skimpy clothes or whatever, I mean, all of these things affect people. And, and there was a, frankly, in our church, there was a time when that was okay because we were bringing people in and whatever. But most of the people we've got here now are of a place in the Lord that we can dress or act or do certain things for the good of others now. There was a time that those things were done, whatever they were, for you. But now uh, I believe the Lord's going to lead us into a time when we can do things for others. You say, oh, no, what's he talking about? Are we all going to have to start wearing suits and stuff? No, that's not what I'm talking about. But I am talking about um, that there are certain things that could be offensive to the regular. What, we, what you might have to do is think about who would venture through those doors. You know what I mean? And, we're, and uh, you know, there was a time 
that I fought for some of you because I didn't want to exclude people either with long hair or blue hair or da 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 or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, girls that didn't wear dresses. I fought for you, but there may be a time that you need to join with me to fight for others who need to be here. Now, I, you know, obviously I believe if the Spirit draws somebody, they're going to be drawn, but I also know that most people that walk in the door aren't going to automatically feel what we all feel or sense what we all sense. In fact, the ones that usually do always go, oh, this is it, and they leave the next day. I don't, you know what I mean? I mean, that's the truth. That really happened. Um, you know, uh, I was talking with Larry once, and uh, Larry was telling me, well, you know, man, I'll tell you, man, I, I had a lot of questions, and I just sat back and looked and watched, and, you know, and I was sitting there going, I love these kind of people. I love people that take the time to, you know, not just accept everything, or, but go, I don't know, man, what about this, you know, and, and checking things out, and, and uh, I just think it's good. I think it's healthy. Because if you actually get your answers from the Lord over those issues, you'll be one of the strongest members that are here. You know what I mean? But if you just come in and accept just because Randy or anybody else said something or because it felt good or whatever, you're asking for trouble. <clears throat> okay, so um, in Luke 17, 37, Jesus said this, Wheresoever the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So what's it talking about there? Well, anybody ever heard of roadkill? <laughs> Where the roadkill is, there you're going to have the birds gathering together. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, and it says the carcass or the body, all right? So where, and I said, I wrote this, where there is meat to eat, that's where the hunger are going to gather. Is that okay? Is that, is that a good way to, I mean, you can state it like a, there's meat to eat, the hungry are going to gather together. The body of Christ is to be a place where the hungry come to feed on the Word of God. And, you know, in this, in this day and age, maybe some of you have been out of it so long you don't realize, but, you know, there's not a lot of churches anymore that have a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday gathering. Did you know that? Are you all aware of that? There's, there's not a lot of churches that do that anymore. I don't know. Is there any in Denton that has Wednesday night? Maybe... Uh, Full gospel in Bethel. Yeah, they probably did. Yeah, well, yeah. No. But, but, in, but my point is, is that a lot of meetings have been cut back over the last four or five years. I mean, people have been cutting back and cutting back and cutting back. <clears throat> but I see people gathering also on uh, regular nights, also Tuesday nights, and also... Thursday nights and other times during the day people come and I believe that this principle is true if somebody's hungry they're going to gather to eat it's just normal you know that's not you see a lot of principles that are that are in the word that I preach they're not things that, that I'm, I preach so that you will jump through a hoop that's ridiculous if somebody's hungry they're going to come to eat you don't have you know what I mean if you set a table on Wednesday night, on Thursday night, on Tuesday night, and they're hungry, they're going to come to you. And if, and if three people show up, if the principle is true, isn't that okay? Isn't it? There's nothing wrong. There's only something wrong with the preacher's ego if he wants 50 people, you know, when he has a special deal or whatever, and only three show up. But in my opinion, if the principle is true and there's three hungry people... Preach, feed those three like you're feeding 5,000 because what difference does it make? It makes no difference, and it doesn't. It doesn't make any difference at all. So, you know, unless, unless you got an ego in there because you're looking for something or you want something. So um, the body of Christ is, is to be a place, and uh, that is not the only reason why the body of Christ gathers together, by the way. But that seems to be what the church at large believes. The only time the family gathers is at meal times, And I don't believe that either. I think that's part of what's wrong with America is the only time families spend any time together 
is at meal times, and the truth is they don't even do that anymore. That's even gone. But I believe that a family is not just to be a mealtime event. That's my family. I believe it is, and the church gathers over meal times. And this is why we have outreaches, folks. This is hard, and you never get this. And some of you don't. I mean, many of you do. But I mean, some never get this. Fellowship Sunday is not just a little. You know, the only reason why you don't get anything out of it and don't want to you know, get involved in it is because you don't realize what it is. It's important. It's important for family to have recreation together. It's important to sit down and talk with people that you haven't got a chance to talk to. And you don't get that on Sunday morning or Sunday night or even Wednesday. But in Fellowship Sunday, you can talk with people you never talked to. But if you just consider it this kind of recreation day and it doesn't matter if I come or go, you don't understand. And if you don't understand, I can't get mad at you, nor can I expect you to jump through my hoop of Fellowship Sunday, because I don't. I just would like for people to hear what I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, if the local body is truly a reflection of the mystical body, there, which means this, in Christ reality, there will only be one point in gathering together, and that is because we have found him. Uh, you say, well, I'm not much of a talker, or I'm not much of a, you know, I don't get along with people real well. But what is it that, that drew the, 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 the guy that was a, a tax collector and the guy that was a zealot together in the same group? They hated each other. They fought each other. One served Rome, the other was trying to overthrow Rome, and here they are on the same team with Jesus, you know. I mean, you got all kind of different people put... But the thing that draws you to, to them is not, you don't have to have a lot of common ground in natural areas. But there's a lot of common ground in the Lord if you have two people seeking the Lord. Now, it is hard, and you know it, and I know it, if you hadn't really been feeding, and people are, the guy you're trying to talk to hadn't been, it's kind of, but if you've kind of been in the Word, uh, this happened a couple of weeks ago where a couple of us sat down here and we just started talking. And we talked 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 and then we talked some more, you know. And you couldn't shut everybody up because we were all talking and having a good time. And it wasn't all the Lord. I mean, uh, to me, my basis of asking all the medical questions really was the Lord. But, but uh, it was a great time, a very enjoyable time, you know. But you got to be available. You got to you got to risk sometimes, like walk over and sit down. You know, we always think somebody's got to take my hand and invite me in. No, that's not true. You're let me say it like this: You're welcome in this place. You're welcome with these people. So take advantage of it. All right, I'm going to finish this. All right. <clears throat> um. So if. So if we're truly a reflection of the Logos and us being in him, if, if, we, if this local body is truly a reflection of what the Logos is, then there's only one point. If he's like the sun and we're all gravitating towards him, there's only one point in being together, him and the sun. So... Maybe, maybe if you don't have a lot of deep stuff to share, there's probably, I mean, don't you ever get a question? Anybody ever have a question? Jot it down and just walk up to somebody and say, you know, Randy was teaching the other night and he said so-and-so. What do you think about that? You know, and if they start going, well, I'll tell you what I was thinking, then just kind of sneak off slowly and look for somebody that, because we... I don't think it's as bad as it used to, but we used to have a couple around here. It was pretty, you know, they would wax eloquent on you and you would feel like, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, but there are some that will maybe share some things with you or just start sharing that will prime your pump and then start going back and forth. And that's, you know, you know, maybe you're at a stage where you need somebody more priming you, but you may need to risk step up and ask the question. Uh, unless it's like me, you know. A lot of times, I mean, I say, I don't know. How to do that? I mean, if I, I don't know. I don't know. That's it. 
I don't know. What do you want me to fake something? I told somebody that once. Because you know? I couldn't believe it. I said, I don't know. And they're going, that's it? You know, I said, what do you want me to fake something? Okay, well, I'll tell you, you know. And people are funny, though. I mean, it's almost like, well, yeah, now I feel a lot better. Go ahead and say something real deep, you know. It means absolutely nothing. It won't help me at all. <clears throat> Notice that though Jesus speaks to the multitudes in parables, and this is found over in uh, Matthew chapter 13, he speaks to the local body of the twelve in explanation of the things that he has taught. Okay, now, I, th I find that interesting because... Jesus would teach. Then, and I'm particularly referring to Matthew 13, he, he taught the, the, uh, uh, the parable of the, the, the mysteries. Uh, he taught on all those, the mysteries of the kingdom. Then, the body or the disciples gathered to him, and what did they do? They said, what were you talking about? We always think we got to get it when the preaching's going on. Isn't that interesting? I love that. You sit, you listen, you write stuff down, then you go to the Lord and say, what the heck does this mean? Is that okay? I think that's the way it should be done. I think that if you're getting everything I share, that you ought to be preaching, frankly, <laughs> you know, instead of me. Because <laughs> I don't know that I get everything I say. No. But, uh, I, you know, you're not supposed to sit there and be able to absorb everything. In fact, I would be very blessed if I thought that you were getting one-tenth of what I was sharing. You know? I don't think you're... But I do think a good procedure, a good way to order your life is from now on, if you're not already doing it, every time you come with the multitude and you sit and listen, then you go to the Lord later and you go, now, what, what, what are you trying to get across there to me? Because... Jesus spoke in parables, but then he later told them, gave them the explanation of what he was talking about. So if this is a habit, if this is the way Jesus was, he is the same yesterday, today, he is, a, you know what I mean, he's a, the beginning and end, Alpha and Omega, I mean, then that means that you could probably come to him now after this gathering and go, you know, I'd really like an explanation, and he may not give it to you right then, but he will give it to you. Now, I believe this. I, don't, I wouldn't even say this if I didn't believe but this is what I have found to be true of the Holy Spirit. I mean, there have been things that's taken years that I asked about, and years later he showed me. But I had faith. I never gave up. I never went, well, and I need to know in two minutes. You know, I never, he's Lord. I mean, I call him Lord because I want him to be Lord. I don't, I don't want to be Lord. You know, and I don't want to call him Lord and be Lord. I want him to be Lord because, and, and there's one main reason why I want him to be the Lord. Because before I had Jesus as my Lord, I had hold of the steering wheel of my life, and I really fouled it up bad. And I was totally convinced that I don't know how to drive. <laughs> now that's, I don't know, maybe some people need more. But I felt that I, I had enough convincing, I can't take care of this, I can't, I don't even know where I'm going. You know what I mean? I don't know, oh, look good over there, well, let's go over there. But with the Lord, you go, I don't know where, I don't know, I don't understand, please teach me, please show me, because if you don't, and I've said this, if I've said it once, I've probably said it hundreds of times, because if you don't, I'm gonna royally mess this thing up. You know it, I know it, the angels know it. The demons know it. Do you really want the demons to be able, the devil to be able to jump in on all this, mess with other people? You know what's going to happen. I need you, please. And he goes, okay, calm down. You know? And he gives me assurance or he shows me. Because I know, see, I know that I can't drive this thing. That's why I need a Lord. And then I need, then when he says, okay, da 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 then I need somebody to explain da 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 I'm not even that smart. And I'm not, you know. I've had people say, oh, Randy, where, you know, from whence cometh this wisdom? Well, it ain't from me or my little head, okay. I made C's, D's, and F's when I was in school. 
uh, I'm not smart and I'm not anything. I, I have Christ as my life and the Holy Spirit is my guide and my teacher. And what, you know what I mean? And God is my Father. You really can't go wrong if you plug into that, you know, that flow there. It's when I don't plug in, I'm doing my own thing that I mess up. So because of years of messing up and failure, not because of years of great wisdom and walking with the Lord, but because of years of messing up and failure, I have learned to kind of just stay over there with him more. And I, you know, and I would love to tell you it's because I catch on quick. It's not. It's because I don't. It's because I'm a jerk. It's because I'm an idiot. But it's because I found security and help and everything that I need in, in the Lord. <clears throat> so, notice that though Jesus speaks to the multitude in, in parables, he speaks to the local body of the twelve in explanation of the things he has taught. The individuals who make up the multitude are always in the dark as to what Jesus means. But the head speaks to his body concerning what is his will. You know? I mean, that's, that's after a pattern, isn't it? Our head, the brain, speaks to the rest. Okay, this is my will. Walk. Now, if we don't understand that, if we're just being good Christians, I'm not just a good I'm not even, you know, I'm, I'm not even a Christian. I'm, I am a member of... I'm in him and one with him, bone of his bone. He is in me and I am in him and that is my hope. And because of that, because I have embraced that identification and that union, and I, do, I haven't just embraced it theologically, I've embraced it in a very real way, in a, in a, in a, in a practical way of how I approach things and, and look at things and, and proceed with things. I could, I could not function apart from this union and apart from my head. I, I can't. I'm not even able to. But I, you know, I told somebody the other day, I am like a vine, that if you cut out of this union with him and threw me over there, I would not grow. I would not succeed. I would wither and die. I would. Now, I know I would. I don't know that everybody would. And I'm not saying that as if that's some great spiritual thing. I'm saying... This is my source, and without it, I'm just with it, you know. And I told that person, I said, I don't even have the strength in me to crawl off and go over and connect myself to a, another vine that would use other methods or whatever because I don't have any hope or strength in me. I don't, I mean, I really don't. I see strength, you see strength. From time to time, that is the Lord. You you misinterpret that and you think that's me. I know better. See, I know better. You don't, but I know better. And I know that with me out over there, I could not. I, I don't even have any hope in me, and I don't even want to look to any other direction. So this is the source. This is it. This is the union. This is life. And Jesus said that when I first got saved. I didn't know that. I had to find that out after I was saved. When I first got saved, I read John 15, and Jesus said, you know, abide in me and me in you, because without me, you can do nothing. And I said, what the heck does that mean? That ain't right. I'm, look, I'm doing all kinds of stuff without you. He said, you sure are, and it ain't nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, but, but even with that explanation, instantly didn't explain it to me. I didn't understand that scripture and I didn't like him saying that. I don't know why. I, I'm just telling you the truth. It was not until years later that I reread it once in a while. I know what that one means. <laughs> Without him, I can do nothing. And, I, and not only can I not do anything, I don't really want to do anything apart from him. And that's kind of a good place to be. It's, it's really a dull place in a certain sense because then you don't have all that spizzerinctum and you don't have all those ideas and plans and you don't, you know what I mean? You don't, I mean, it's like before you were really something that could be used of God. You know what I mean? Because I mean, you, yeah, you know, and you, and 
come on and you know and now you just go look if you break me off from this thing there's no yeah come on or ooh it's just could you please reattach me <laughs> Man, that's all I got okay that's all I got and I know it you know then you read that and you go Lord not just Lord Jesus in heaven Jesus the vine because I know him as the vine not just as Lord or Savior or I know him personally as the vine. Jesus, my vine, the true vine, without you, I can do nothing. And not only that, without you, I don't want to try. Yes? Amen. Amen. I said the head speaks to his body concerning his will. When we ask, as Paul did, Paul said, Lord, what would, wilt thou have me to do? Remember when on the road to Damascus, he was, and then, boom, you know, he met the Lord. Lord, what would thou have me to do? Good, good, by the way, good first title Lord good you know what I mean uh, started off really strong um, then he will direct us just as with Paul to a local body where we can learn the mind of Christ and learn that the mind of Christ is the only thing that can control the body um, okay you look at you as an individual you're just you and the only thing that can control you is you Okay, but you're not just you. You are a member of his body, and the only thing that can control his body is his mind, is the head. But you don't see, you don't basically relate to the Lord that way. You don't think in terms of union with Christ. You think in terms of you, and, and you've got this uh, monster in there, and it's your job to wrestle him to the ground. You know what I mean? And that's kind of, you know what I mean? And that's, that's uh, and, and, and with the Lord's help, you know, God helping us, that, that, isn't, that isn't it, you know. It is this union, it is this one, and you, the only thing that can control the members of his body is his head. But when you don't identify and you don't look by faith and you don't believe and you have not accepted the basic, and I, and I mean basic facts of the gospel, then you're on your own because faith, you, your faith is in that God is going to help almost a fallen member of Adam's race overcome the old nature. Whereas, as joined to him, he took you to the cross. There you were crucified. Not, he, he isn't going to crucify your flesh. He did it through one body, all of us being joined together. But we keep looking to God individually, apart from the one, apart from the union, and apart from the logos, the complete thought and concept of God, trying to be that acceptable member and it can't happen I mean you know I say these things to people because because it's the truth and I say it because it can't happen it's it now nah, it doesn't victory and freedom does not lead down that road and I just don't want people to just spend their whole life rearing themselves and then thinking why doesn't God help me why doesn't God intervene for me? And of course, God does. I mean, he'll, 
Come down and he'll get in your circumstances and he'll touch you just enough to give you some hope and everything again. But that isn't even the realm he wants to be helping you in. But he'll do that, but he really does that just to keep you from going totally discouraged so that maybe you'll continue long enough and really see what the real deal is. You understand what I'm saying? And so, um, <clears throat> so that this, this father-son thing, the way the father relates to the son, that's the beginning, that's the middle, and that's going to be what is acceptable or more than acceptable, the way, the truth, the life, the resurrection, the peace, the hope. That's what it's, it's all going to end up, eternal. Eternal in the son. And the only way to be in the son is to be a member of his body. Join with him in union. Not, I'm, I'm saved, so I'm a member of his body, and go on and just, it's not, uh, that is so wrong. I mean, everybody does it, but that's wrong. It's got to be a real, living, working relationship. That's the only, I don't even know how to put it, you know. <clears throat> that's why, you know, I mean, I just, I don't know how to put it. So he will direct us to a local body. And of course, he's told Paul, you know, uh, he knocked down on the road to Damascus and he said, go into its town and there you're going to find a member of the body of Christ and he'll tell you what to do. You know, and we're going, I want to hear from the Lord. I want you to tell me, Lord. I'm following you. I mean, you're the one who knocked me down on the road to Damascus and, you know, I'm asking you face to face, what do you want me to do? I'm telling you as Lord what I want you to do. I want you to go join yourself to another member of the body who will come and he will tell you. Oh, come on. You know, we want, I want this. And see, like the 12, you cannot join to Jesus without being joined to the rest that are following him for three and a half years because they never left. They were there night and day constantly. They were part of the deal. Well, I don't like him. You don't have to like him. I don't like that about that person. You don't have to like that. That's not what drew, drew you together. It's so dumb to think you've got to like everything about everybody. You don't. I mean, on, you know, on one hand, you could probably rightfully say this. You don't have to like them. You do have to love them, but you don't have to like them. You don't have to like somebody that, you know, I mean, I do this sometimes, you know. You don't have to like that. You may hate that. I hate that. I hate that he always does this, you know. I hate it. It drives me crazy. Why does he do that? You don't have to like that. You don't have to like those quirky, weird things. And I've got a bunch of them, but, but you do have to love me because of the nature of the Lord in you. But the nature of the Lord in you will never like weird, quirky things. Okay, so see the difference. Accept people for where they're at. Pray for them. Slap their hand when they do this or whatever it takes. But follow and love and be involved with the body. A few more sentences and we're finished. <clears throat> he will direct us to a local body where we learn the mind of Christ can only control the body. Only the head, only the mind of Christ can control the body. My mind can tell my hand to pick up a hammer and it will obey. But I cannot make the members of another's body obey my inward thoughts and requests. So, you know, and this is, this is just another one of those facts. You can tell when somebody's plugged into the body, plugged into the mind of Christ, and when they're not, you can tell. When they're off, they're off, and you know that they're off, and they just kind of, you know, and, you know, they're not, pl they're not plugged into the body, maybe because they don't even understand what you're talking about. To them, plugged into the body means I have to attend to all the services and every time the doors are open, all this, and I got other things to do, and I don't know why you put those demands on me when that's not what I'm talking about at all. It's not. But every time I say that, people could read it that way, and that's not what I'm talking about. But they don't understand. So, once again, how do you get mad at them? I've had people say to me, How are you so patient? You know what I mean? How can you be so patient? I've told you three or four things today. How can you get mad at somebody if they don't, if, it, if they're not plugged in the body, if it's not a result of life, if, if they're trying to do programs because they haven't seen that there is no hope? In, you know what I mean? How can you get, you can't get mad at them. You just hope and pray that they will eventually see, but you're not mad at them. You jerk, why don't you see the truth? 
you know, and especially some of them are really trying, you know what I mean? But you can't be mad at them. You just continue to share the word because that's, that is their hope. You continue to love them. You continue to be with them. If they're added to the body, it's like, you know, what if somebody, do we think that all 12 walked along and went, Jesus spoke and they went, bing, all together and went, oh yeah, 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 praise the Lord, fellowship, fellowship. Do we think that's what happened? <laughs> you know? Or do you think maybe maybe somebody was a little slower than somebody else? Maybe somebody, maybe Peter thought he got it when he didn't and he's going, yeah, I got it, I got it, come on, babies, you know? And, and uh, Thaddeus is sitting over there going, who the? Everybody's going, come on, Thad, don't you get it? You know, and he's going, it's, what it is is this. You know, he's going, well, I don't know, man. Huh? You know? I mean, see, we, we paint all these pictures. I think it was probably like that. I, you know, I think they had to put up with one another. I think they argued. I think junk went on. And they, they, they didn't all just throw up their hands and walk off because they were all dedicated to following Jesus. And that meant hanging with one another. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Philip, have I been so long with you? And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, so my mind can tell my hand to pick up a hammer and it will obey, but I cannot make the members of another's body obey my inward thoughts and requests. And that's not just true spiritually speaking. That is true right here. I can't make you obey what I... You can't walk in the light I've seen. And for me to push and, you know, come on, or to browbeat you, that's no good. It's not going to help you. The only thing I can do is, if I truly have seen something, then I must be faithful to share that till you do, unless somebody has another idea. I'm, I maybe never thought of... I mean, is there another idea? I come to think of it, I... Maybe never considered one, yeah. <laughs> Murder, yeah, that would work. <laughs> I think that's that. I was thinking that's kind of like expecting a child to have a living in the Lord here from that church to come here and have this church and maybe upset with them because the vision is not going to Right, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, and there are people in our body, there's people in this Bible school that are the same way. They're like they came from another planet and they don't know what's going on. Uh, they might even think they know what's going on, but they don't. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, what are, what are we supposed to do? You know, there's only one thing to do. Share with them. You know, not shove it down their throat or think that by coming on real strong it's going to make them know it because it doesn't make them know it. In fact, in most cases it makes them put up a wall. And where did I learn this? Mr. Jerk himself, I failed on all these fronts way more than anybody here. So I, most of the time I'm not preaching this to try to get at somebody. I'm preaching this because I know it's true because I've done it. Right, and that's the only that's the only thing that makes any difference. And you know, the Lord's going to test us with what we know. If we truly know it, you can be patient. If you don't know it, you can only be Jesus for so long, and then you're going to get upset and pick up a rod and beat the fool out of everybody. You know what I'm saying? I mean, to abide long is a test that, okay, big shot, you got the message, you know the truth, let's see it. Let's see it in a, in a what does it say, through a good life and a, you know, so-and-so conversation out of good works, let it be shown. And, I mean, that's, that's ultimately, if this message is life and is a life, then it's got to be worked here first. 
you know? And if it's not worked here, then I can't expect it to be worked there. But bless God, it is worked here, so what's wrong with it? Just kidding. One more sentence, and then we'll be out of here. Colossians 2.19, this is based on it. Only as we find ourselves in the one body of Christ um, can we be motivated by the head from whom ALL, all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment ministered. That's why I so desperately want to feed you. Because if it feeds you, you will have nourishment ministered. You will grow. And knit together. Knit together, folks. You ain't going to be knit any other way. You knit together. Increases with the increase of God. Okay, I know that I have many, 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 many things I could share out of this first chapter. I mean many. I could probably preach on Behold the Lamb of God for the next two months, but I, I really feel in my spirit that uh, I, don't, I have nothing to prove that I can preach for 20 years on the first chapter. I've tried to communicate what I felt was the Lord.